Hey folks, I'm back. Hey guys, it's been a while. Hope you're all keeping okay. It's been very, I've been very, very busy ever since that uh, collaboration I did with Savage to Folklore, which has gone down a treat. Cheers, guys. So, today I'm in Exmoor, Exmoor National Park, the Somerset side. And um, I'm now uh, ascending up what is the highest peak in Somerset. It's up there somewhere beyond the clouds. It's uh, 519 meters above sea level. I don't know why I haven't done it yet because, well, I love my peaks and I love Somerset. And uh, for some reason, it's only recently occurred to me what is the highest peak in Somerset. And here we are. Um, so, there's something really uh, special at the top, which I'm really looking forward to seeing. And whilst I'm in the area, there's a couple more uh, little gems that we're going to explore. There's a few stone circles nearby. Um, sorry, two, there's two stone circles nearby, and they're the only two stone circles in Exmoor, apparently. So, that's the goal for today. Stepping right into the Bronze Age. <laughs> right. So yeah, I started this hike about 20 minutes ago. Apparently it takes about an hour to get to the top, so yeah, already nearly there. So yeah, see you in a bit. Yeah, you're probably wondering, like, what is he doing <laughs> going out on a hike on a very gloomy day like this? Well, I mean, it doesn't bother me. Uh, yeah, I love going on hikes all year round. I mean, we just got into autumn now. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, like, it doesn't matter if it's autumn, spring, summer or winter. I'm still always out and about. I mean, uh, yeah, you can just sort of embrace the nature's magic, you know, for whatever the season. Um, <laughs> you know, the fog gives it a really uh, special atmosphere, you know, sort of special ambience, you know. And not only that, something I do like about uh, hiking when um, the weather is not so great is the fact that no one else is around. <laughs> I like having places like this to myself. Um, not, not to say that I don't like going on walks with people, but I mean, I don't know, I'm sure a lot of you would agree that, you know, this, when you're in a, an area like this completely by yourself, it's, uh, it really adds to it, you know, you get that sort of solitude um, that you wouldn't get otherwise. And it's getting really thick now, look at this. You know, just trying to get some drone footage just now and my drone was not having any of it. It just sort of seems that getting in, into the clouds. Nah, didn't want to know. So, anyways, um, yeah, I don't think we're far now. I mean, I know you already know we're past the halfway point, and this is, this is not at all a difficult walk. It's these paths that are uh, really easy to make out, and uh, yeah, easy, easy, easy. Okay. Let's get going. Right, I can see the, the peak for the fog now. We're there, let's go. Right, so we made it to the top of uh, 
Dunkery Beacon. And this is the highest point in Somerset. And uh, you're probably wondering what that is. So uh, let's get a closer look and I'll uh, tell you. All right, so what we have here, we've got one there, we've got one there as well, and a mound there. And these are all kerns from the Bronze Age from around 2000 to 1600 BC. As you can see, they've obviously suffered a lot of uh, damage from the wind, being obviously high up, exposed. This is what remains of this one. This one was obviously, obviously constructed, reconstructed later on. Um, there's a total of five up here, apparently. I mean, got these two mounds, like I pointed out already. So this is basically where the dead would be buried. And, uh, you know, ceremonies of uh, worship, ancestor worship, would have been taking place here. Um, the reason why they were put on top of hills was because it could be closer to, to the gods, uh, it's, it's like a fitting place to enter the afterlife. So, this is quite special really. Our ancestors from around 2,000 years ago dotted around here, burying their dead, praising their dead, worshipping their ancestors. It really feels like you're stepping in into your past when you go to, to a somewhere like this. And obviously what makes it even better for me is the fact that it's up a high peak. <laughs> it's a shame that it's a, uh, well, it's not the end of the world that's foggy because I've already said already that there is uh, it's always nice in the same way when it is it's sort of uh, foggy but I mean uh, I've been told on a clear day you can see like Wales and like all of Dartmoor and surrounding areas like that but it's fine for now we don't need to see what's around us which could be enclosed in this uh, very special spot with these Bronze Age kerns. It's so still up here, like, I can't hear anything. I can hear the birds, a tiny bit of traffic. Not at the moment though. It's so quiet up here. I'm actually glad I came up here on a foggy day, as I said already, I know, but it's really, added to the ambience. This is perfect, this is just what I needed. Look at this. I can't see very far around me. But uh, I really do feel that's a I'm at peace, you know. <laughs> like a lot like a lot of places I go to, it's like I get that feeling of I just don't want to leave. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you got to, this is one of those things where you just got to embrace it as you can and um, yeah, just walk away. Obviously this won't be the last time I'm here, definitely not. And as I said already, like um, 
about how these sort of places were always like on top of hills. Yeah, a lot of uh, pagan or if you want to call it pre-Christian uh, religious sites were up hills. Uh, a few examples from the, some of the videos I've made in the past, like um, you may have remembered when um, I went to Brentsaw in Devon. Um, th that church is said to have been built on a site previously used for pagan pagan worship or well, any sort of pre-Christian religions. Um, you may remember when I was in Breen Down. Again, some traces of uh, Celtic Romana hill forts. Um, and you also remember that beautiful stone circle in North Wales I went to. Another example, another pre-Christian site on top of a hill. So, uh, and as I said already, be closest to the gods, you know, be able to see the sort of kingdoms around you. There's something about being on a peak it sort of gives you a sort of a, an essence, a state of tranquility you don't get anywhere else. So yeah, a peak like this is very fitting. Right then, let's uh, make our way back down. And so, um, yeah, two more places to check out today. Neither are, are very far from here, but I think it's just the, uh, the challenge is just going to be finding them. Um, I've done a bit of research. Obviously, I'm not going to trust the like of uh, Google Maps to get me there. So it's just going to be a case of like getting close to it on the uh, GPS and then having a little mooch. So yeah, it's going to be a nice little adventure. So yeah, it's been beautiful so far. I really cannot wait. I'm already looking forward to uh, the day of when I come back here. Maybe come here again uh, in springtime perhaps, or just on a clearer day, where I can uh, see more of the surroundings around me. So, okay folks, let's get going. See you in a bit. So we are uh, back at the car park at the foot of Dunkery Beacon and yeah the fog has really set quite low now. It wasn't like this when I set off about an hour ago. Um, so this might make finding the next couple of destinations challenging but that's fine, I like a good challenge. <laughs> I don't do this because it's easy. <laughs> right so yeah let me just get my bearings and uh, head on off to stop number two. Let's do this. Onwards to our second destination of today. Um, so this is a close to a little village called Withneypool, and um, yeah, it's going to be, it's the place we're going. The place that we're looking for is a uh, Withneypool Stone Circle. So um, I know it's in this field. I know where it is on the map. So yeah, we're going to in the right direction so yeah this should work out I have read that it is quite tricky to find when the, the weather ain't so good and you know it's a bit overgrown around it so yeah the weather's not really on our side it has started to rain a bit but I'm sure I'll find it so yeah very barren around here I'm like the only one here, apart from the cows and the sheep. <laughs> so yeah, all right. Let's keep plowing on and uh, yeah, see you shortly. God, look at that, even on a gloomy day like this, it's still absolutely stunning. Exmoor never disappoints no matter what the weather. <laughs>
guys can see it, but there is an X more pony in the, in the distance. I did try to get a zoom in. Yeah, quite majestic that. Just like this steel field. Oh, there's one over there as well. A couple of those now. Do what about That's awesome. Right. Just trying to find it now. I think I am pretty much in the area where it is. I'm just trying to look around for any stones. Like I said already, it's going to be quite a hard one to navigate or locate. Like when you get into the area, you've got to really keep your eyes peeled for it. I'll keep hunting for it, don't worry. Isn't that wonderful? Yes, yeah, so I found it, and just so, as I have, the sun is coming out. But yes, guys, like I said, it's difficult to see, but yes, I'm standing right in the middle of a stone circle now. Have a look at that. That was a sort of giveaway, but yeah. I know from here, you can't see any stones, but let me uh, give you guys a bit of a closer look at the stones. Right, I mean, look, got a stone there. Stone there, stone there. I'm gonna tell you what, let's walk around the stone circle and uh, count. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So yeah, I count 15 stones in a circle. And yeah, what a place for a stone circle. Look at that. It's out of the way, it's peaceful, it's barren. Just myself and the ponies in the distance. Love it. This is why I do what I do, guys. This is what it's all about. <laughs> This stone circle was discovered in 1898 and it would have been concealed for thousands of years. You know, even finding them now is quite difficult. I mean, like, if I hadn't have known it was here, I would have gone just gone straight past it and not even thought about it. But no, discovered in 1898, concealed for God knows how long. And, um, yeah, I'm glad they found it, even if it is just the, the, a few small stones. Someone noticed it noticed it was a stone circle and uh yeah now Whitty Pool has its own stone circle that's awesome kudos to whoever it was he found it <sighs> he found what the past left us <laughs> so stone circles were generally used as places of worship ceremony sacrifice healing and just general social gatherings by our uh, pre-Christian ancestors. Something that they say about this stone circle is that it's purposely close to a river, as you see the souls would depart and return via the river. <sighs> this is a very special place, and just like Dunkery Beacon just now, it's just like, I just don't wanna leave. <laughs> Got this whole place to myself, gorgeous. Not another human being in sight. Love it. What a really re rewarding day it's been so far. Right. It's been a great day. It's been very special so far beautiful nature and connecting with my past. Right, we're gonna head back to my car now and uh, check out stone circle number two of today, which uh, that was, that'll be every stone circle in uh, Exmoor, because apparently there's only two stone circles in Exmoor. Um, 
So yes, let's crack on in a bit. Right, let's go look for the third and final destination of today. Let's go. Right. From what I've researched, it's just in this field, just here, and it's just like we're right up close to it already. So let's have a look. Yeah, here it is, guys. Four lots in circle. Yeah, the weather's definitely got worse throughout the day, but it doesn't matter. I mean. This has been incredibly rewarding, finding these little hidden stone circles. Stones here on pretty high, higher than the last one. <laughs> they said um, previously there was 43 stones and now only 14 remain. Yeah. Little one there, look. <laughs> See, whether or not these were put here later or these are the original stone circles, it's hard to say. And that will have to be the biggest one out of all of them. <laughs> so yeah, what a treat. So that's uh, both stone circles in Exmoor for you guys. So yeah, it's been very rewarding. Somerset's highest, highest peak and these two stone circles. What more could you want? <laughs> wondering why I brought a Somerset flag along with me because I mean obviously everywhere I've been today three days Somerset <laughs> Somerset flag especially is quite modern but I mean you know it's just a symbol of pride the um, these gems we have within our county still able to connect with the past in such a way place has been preserved and you know the past lives on within the barriers of the, my beloved county Somerset <laughs> so yeah I should bring a Somerset flag along with me more often <laughs> so yeah just going to absorb this now for a bit more cheers Okay then guys, that brings me to the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. It's been a great day exploring these uh, gems in the Somerset side of Exmoor. Um, don't forget, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Telegram. And if you fancy it, leave a donation via buy me a coffee. That support really helps. And um, right, yeah, as always, Good, got a good, got a good few things lined up. So uh, yeah, keep checking back, guys. Please like this video. Please leave a comment, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. I'm getting closer and closer to that thousand sub threshold now. So if I can hit that by the end of the year, that would be fantastic. That really uh, set me up on a nice path for 2024, which is coming quite soon. Okay, then, folks. Right. Thanks again. Remember, if you don't look for what the past has left you, you will not find it. Cheers and guys, see you at the next one. Cheers.